to order the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees of the Board of Trustees and the Board of Trustees. And it's Pierre Watkins, Pierre Trojan, Pierre Carter, Pierre Carter, Pierre Carter. Okay, uh, item three is public comment. Uh, is there any comments the public would like to make? If you see, especially correspondence or something else that you're involved in, you'd like to wait, but it's a time for the public to take it. Um, yes, name or address? Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I just want to know if you want to talk about the sidewalk now. Or um, well, we have some correspondence. You could do it now if you don't want to stay for later. Well, I have to stay all the way to the end. I okay. didn't see sidewalk on here. I just saw, you know. Oh, well, we have it on course. Yeah. You've got to have it on correspondence. Number eight. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but usually you don't discuss correspondence. Yeah. So I'll say what I want to say. Okay. okay. How's that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I would like the board to consider, uh, I guess, this probably since the day I heard that the uh, grant was written, that they finish up the sidewalks on my side of the street, um, from Lake Street up to what would be the Mountain Search parking lot. Um, definitely, it's very uneven. There are broken things that are there, and we've been told that if there was any money left over, it might be considered, or it could be a community bill, but I think it would be nice if we could done all in this one project. What I notice is that people are using the sidewalk on uh, South Street from School House to Wig. They are really enjoying it. As soon as they hit that intersection, they get in the street. And I think that first block of South Street is a very dangerous thing because people come kind of whipping around that corner from 96. And if you're right there in the street, and it's not just you know, the four of us that live on that block that, that are on that side that are affected. There are people who come walking their children to um, the nursery school. There are people from the food bank, people that go to the church, um, people that are going to the library. Um, so it's, it's heavily trapped, but most of the time they're in the street. Even though we try to keep our walks cleared, we're below grade. And so the water comes down there in the pits, basically. <clears throat> Ice is open, and the people have fallen. It's, it's a problem. I would just like to, if we're going to have it, just have it, you know, start on that side and go all the way down. <laughs> I just think that would be a, a good thing. Okay. I would like to confirm. Yeah, name and address. Kathy Pepper, 31 Wade Street. Sorry. I would just like to confirm what Janet says. That sidewalk is treacherous. When you're pushing the strollers, dragging the kids, walking on ice, walking on snow, because people go to the library a lot that way. Or just down in the street. So if it yeah, if it does come under budget and we our next year's budget we have side <coughs> money allocated and it could go to something like that. I met with Alan Moe over there on something else and he's interested in doing something this year again. So that okay. uh, long as DPW would be EW's help, but uh yeah, community yeah, budget that's and, you know, issue. Uh, I know that uh, James who lives uh, from Tel who lives on the corner said, you know, well, uh, yeah, if DPW could help with frames, etc., yeah. that we probably could organize some people. But a lot of people that um, volunteer for these kinds of things are over 70 years old, you know. Yeah. So it's <laughs> not ideal for the old people in the neighborhood to be out there pretending like they know what they're doing. Did you said that James is interested in nothing? Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. He's not into architects, but well, right? yeah. Yeah. So I talked to all four of the people on this side and asked them to write and probably none of them did, but they told me that they thought it was a good idea. I'm the only one with slate sidewalks. Everybody else has broken and heaved uh, cement. Uh, but slate sidewalks are tre treacherous when they're wet and icy. And people have fallen in front of my head. Any other public comments? Okay, if not, we'll move to item four. Um, public hearing for proposal of the law one of 2018, a local law providing the flexibility and ability to override the tax levy limitation established by a general municipal law 3-C. 
Um, so I'm going to make a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, state it passes. Uh, so this is a time for the public to comment uh, on proposed local law number one, 2000. Uh, we did some assisting with the Smith Woods fence. 
um, within the last week so they can get that project finalized. And uh, pretty much kept up with snow uh, for the last few weeks. And that's about it. Any uh, questions or comments for, for Dusty? What's the water main break count up to? For this uh, eight on the year. What's about the normal? About like normal. Um, the last two years have been really light. Three, I think, each of the last two years, and then the two years previous to that, we had 12 and 15. So we're right about in range for what we normally have. So, no other department heads, so we can should move I on. Officially, in that? Okay. okay. We should officially recognize the, the Dusty as the new DPW supervisor. Has been since I don't know February. Thanks, Dustin. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, that brings us to the force of representatives. So I see Anna and Nancy, and I don't know which, which one wants to go first. Sure. Yeah. Um, so a couple things. Uh, thanks, Marty. The uh, for the county jail, we've added some staff, which we've been trying to get the got a budget this year, but we've actually added them now, so we've more mental health staff. So that is good on site. And in the, the airport, you might have heard about before, we've been trying to, we have proposed expansion, and that's looking a little bit more likely. We've been meeting with some folks in Albany, so hopefully that'll go through and they can add another ramp. So uh, external ramps, so that'll help a lot. And, we're looking at trying to have the addition plus the whole airport facility um, go geothermal for heating and air conditioning. So there's some grants out there right now, and in large part having to do with in Dryden, um, since they're not having the new pipeline come through, so from through Dryden to Lansing, NYSEG is offering some uh, some incentives to have places go off of natural gas to help lessen the load of, of, so that since license is going to be getting less gas. So we're looking at that. And uh, one big thing I wanted to pass on <coughs> is March 24th, so that's not this coming Saturday. It's not the next Saturday. Saturday. It, um, I don't have the time here. They, they changed the time a couple times. But there's a Facebook page. Uh, they're having um, a march or a gathering downtown, and maybe I'll look it up and while Nancy's talking. I think it's at two. It's at two o'clock on the Commons, and it's in solidarity with with the the, the, the kids down in Florida where they had the twenty fifth, right? Twenty fourth, twenty fourth, two o'clock on the Commons. And it was ten, and now it's two. Now it's two, right? Any questions for now? Thank you. Yeah, I um, am sorry to report that the uh, joint fire EMS meeting that we were trying to pull together for this coming Wednesday is not going to take place, and some of our efforts at rescheduling have been challenging, so that will be rescheduled at another time. I'll be sending out official notification tomorrow for the cancellation so that everybody knows what's going on. We will. Uh, I'm sorry that we uh, couldn't make that work, but um, uh, uh, sort of a community announcement that the town had been involved in advising the uh, Community uh, Science Institute holds a series of water quality workshops around the county. And when I saw the one that they were offering in Bandy, I asked if they would do one for the town of Ulysses. And they are planning one for next Wednesday, <coughs> March 21st, at 5.30 at the uh, Philomathic Library. And basically, they review what you need to know about your water, how can you test if your water is safe, if you're on a public system, so this is relevant for village residents as well as those in Jacksonville. Um, 
if you're on a public system, what are they testing for? So that it just increases everybody's general knowledge about water quality and what you can do to get your water tested if you're not uh, in a public system and sort of how to protect yourself and your family. So uh, 530 to 7, um, March 21st at the library at 530. Um, at, the li at the At the library here in the village. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, because it, you know they, they're doing it, and I'm sure they rotate them around, but there should be posters going up um, about it. So um, that's pretty open for public. Um, in terms of the town board itself at our meeting tomorrow night, um, we've got a bunch of things on the agenda, but one that I'm happy to report because you've been hearing for literally years about our efforts to acquire <coughs> and sell the church in Jacksonville. And tomorrow we expect to uh, act on an offer that uh, will more than cover the costs that we have invested in acquiring and maintaining it. And so if all the conditions and contingencies all work out, we may in fact be um, Achieving our goal of having that historic building uh, move into the hands of a private person willing and able to renovate the exterior and repurpose the interior. So um, that's a good thing. That there's still a couple, you know, a couple eyes to dot and T's to cross, but I, I, we have an offer in hand and we have priority from unforeseen circumstances except to expect to accept that tomorrow night. Um, we've been busy filling seats on our planning and zoning board and making sure we have alternates for those. Um, we've had our version of, of uh, controversy and concern over the fact that there is a, a development district in the town on Du Bois Road where Moore's Marine Service is. It was something that years ago was agreed to be allowed in an what was then an agricultural area, now sort of transitioning to be a residential area, and a business sort of smack in the middle there, and they've been making some changes that put them out of compliance. And the first round of effort was to see whether the rules for the development district could be adjusted to bring them into compliance. But we held a public hearing two weeks ago, and um, members of the community who lived near there had a lot of concerns we weren't aware of initially. And uh, that's going back to the planning board, and we're going to figure out how to thread the needle of uh, helping a small business operate safely and, well, not intruding on their neighbors. Uh, and address the neighbors' concerns as well. So um, that's something we've got another one that's, that's less uh, controversial, so sort of a, a map change. Our zoning project continues. Um, that will, and I think in the next few months, be working its way from our zoning update committee to our town board, and we're going to be doing some homework to try to prepare for what the process might look like once it arrives at the town board. Um, because I, I think we will not have something that all segments of the community agree with, and so we will try to figure out how to reconcile some of those, those conflicts between the concerns that have been identified largely by the farming community, but some other segments of the community <coughs> as we try to figure out how to protect ag land by reducing development, but in ways that don't reduce people's ability to sell their land when they need to for either refinancing their farm operations or when they're much older, selling off their version of a 401 k for their retirement. So it's uh, strongly held feelings on all sides, and so we will be embarking on that in a few months. But I think those are the, the highlights and lesson videos. Questions? Any uh, questions or comments for Nancy? Do you know what they plan to do with the church? If you can talk about it. Um, mixed use, I'll just say that. 
No, I mean, I, I think um, almost all of almost all of, we actually, we showed it over 40 times. We actually had four offers. Um, and uh, I believe the uh, concept is to have a residence and then a uh, yet to be determined other use. And uh, we did uh, actually take the step of asking anybody who was bidding on it, the town developed like five questions that we would ask people to say, how does your proposed, we asked what the proposed uses would be, how do those relate to our comprehensive plan and the character of, of the hamlet? Um, and how we would envision doing the, complying with the exterior historic uh, preservation deed restrictions as well as the environmental. I mean, it's a challenging property for anybody to take on due to all its history. And then um, asking people, you know, about their financial qualifications and sort of what their time frame was. Um, and so, out of those four offers, we using those questions, we developed because it's a small town. We wanted to try to keep this as clean as possible and. Um, we developed a set of criteria and assigned sort of scores for that, established a minimum score beyond which we wouldn't sell even if we had an offer. Um, and um, we got a total of four proposals, ranked each one according to the criteria, and the one we're expected to accept tomorrow had uh, shared the highest price and had the highest score. So more to be determined if, in fact, their interest continues to be to reach out to the community. We'll certainly assist them in any way to to do that. But what they end up doing as a private owner, as long as it conforms with their zoning, will be up to them. But if they want to be in, we can we can help them with that, or we can help the community talk to them. So, yes. how long has the town on that piece been? Only well, since July of 2017. It took three years to negotiate to get it. Um, but we closed on it in July of 17. So while we would have liked it to have sold in months, it actually is pretty good. <laughs> I think time wise that it's probably nine months later, practically. So. All right, any other questions or comments or answers? Uh, yes, go ahead. Yes, okay. I just wanted to thank Nancy again for working so hard for the three years to get that property. Because I, I live on Swamp College, so close to Jacksonville, and so the, the devastation that's been caused in that, in that area because of the original gas spill and all that. So that I, speaking for myself and for the other people around that area, so thank mm -hmm. you for working so hard to get that property saved. Yeah, it's a bit of a relay race. The community did its best to try to do it. The town only entered sort of late in the process, and Rich Goldman and I were sort of the point people on it. Was really sort of was the first one to lead the charge, and then we just sort of all came on. So thank you. Um, I see Jason's back there. We don't have a lot of uh, department head reports, but since you're here, if you. Sure, I just, I don't have much other report other than the report. Um, I think I emailed you, Lord, and Rachel the drawing, fuzzy drawing, however you want to put it, and the estimated price. Um, I, the drawing is not anything set in stone, it's just an idea he came up with. Um, and like I texted Rachel a little while ago, He's not going to put a lot of time into it because it's all his own time that he's doing this for us right now until I think the village commits or says we're going to go one way or the other. So that's all on his own time that he did that to provide that. Um, the new truck that we got back in August, the damage that was done, that's all getting fixed as we speak. Should be back this week. Um, and then. The ladder truck is going back to Buffalo when that one gets back because the generator quit one more time and uh, they finally found what they think the problem is and it needs to go to their shop to actually fix it. You can't do it in house. So it's a lot of truck switching around. Uh, the new one, the mini pumper is ordered. I'm going down April 4th to Pennsylvania to meet with the. Um, 
lost it, production manager or whatever to go over the specs and everything to make sure it's all good to when it comes in to, to get going. And other than that, how much more is going on? Um, been training on a house down on Route 89 that the Girl Scout camp gave us to use. Um, Tom went down, Tom Myers that is went down. End of last week with Dan Shear to take a look at it because they did ask to burn it down for them to see if there would be a possibility with asbestos and all that. Um, Tom didn't look like there was anything. Uh, we have to contact the DEC now to follow their protocol. So it's up to them whether we do it or not. Um, I, I couldn't what you said. That's a win win. Thank you. Um, Rachel came to the fire meeting on Wednesday. Um, I'll say here publicly, thank you very much for what you've done for the fire department. Um, we appreciate it very much. And I kind of picked on her a little bit that she's leaving just as she got to know what she was doing in the fire department and used to what she was doing. So it's a joke between Rachel and I. But thank you very much for what you did for us. You're welcome. Um, and I didn't think I was going to be here. Um, I, the other thing I mentioned to Rachel was, I guess, without me going any further, um, I guess we kind of got to decide where, where we want to go with this whole building project. Um, I just need a plan or a view or, or something where to go because I don't want to be out in limbo like we were before. Uh, yeah, so I, guess, I, I guess I don't want to do all this work and then all of a sudden say we're not doing anything. So right now we have like a barely labeled sketch under the graph paper, which is fine. I guess a fine place to start. But, so the idea is that we have enough, a, a very rough estimate about how much he thinks it might cost. Right, and, I, I, and that's the thing I didn't get a chance to ask him. That number that he, you guys have, I don't know if that's completely finished. I don't know if that's for the building part. I don't know if that's for everything on the inside. That I, I don't know. It's just a rough number, so. I think he probably just took a square footage number and did whatever a square foot cost and estimated what roughly the type of building. Okay, and so if that number seems like a ballpark reasonable number, then we take the next step of asking him to come up, or someone else to come up with. I think the next step's going to cost money on the village board's part to engineering like we did with right. MRB. Um, this company has all their own people they work with. They have people they work with they are not their own people because they don't want to get in that bidding thing where it's being done so they automatically get it type thing. But so so, we, so if we say we pay, um, can you construction, what's it called? I always get it wrong. It's, I think it's complete construction concepts or it's construction, it's something, it's yeah. Something like that. Yeah, I always get it backwards. Potentially paying him to do an engineering drawing and then putting it to bid to whomever. Uh, but he may. Yeah, I don't even know how much that costs. So unless he put it in that one email, I can't remember. He was uh, fifty thousand. He did. I don't I know what that fifty thousand costs. I don't know if that's part of that four fifty. I don't know. I don't remember. I think that's a I'll send it to you. It's like it's. it's I mean, I th I think this is the laundry room. I didn't even say it on it. I I was kind of shocked at how like basic it was. Even I know it's his own. Well, it's kind of. I don't even know what he what do you call it. It's like the decon room where it has the gear washer. Yeah, I don't think he labeled it. Well, I can get more detail on that cost. I don't know what it entails. I need to get a chance to look. Yeah, so I, I, like I said, I wasn't prepared to be here, so. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I am just a little surprised that it wasn't even labeled, I guess. But I appreciate it anyway. Uh, so I will email him tomorrow and get what that, whatever it costs was, 50000 what it entails, a breakdown of what that does. Cool. If, that's what, if that's the price, he, I can't remember. Yeah, so when I, um, <coughs> Thousand dollars is the cost for full plans and a and bid set and a bid package ready 
for you to copy and put out to bid. Oh, so, so it's basically him doing everything for us then. I guess he gave us a price under the assumption that he would be doing the work, but I guess of that $50,000 is the cost of the plans. So, that part of that, right? Yeah, I haven't had a chance to review it yet. And I just, I don't know how much, like, I don't know how much we want to spend on the money, so, I don't know how much we want to spend on the money. How about I just go back to him and get the details with all that come and I'll come back next month? Well, I think either way, we're it's still going to reach the point of having to decide how much we want to spend on the building. Okay. So. Did you budget? Yeah. We have our, our building reserve. We have, yeah. We had to pay. There's not building reserve money to build it, but there's building reserve money to make, take the next step, at least. Yeah. Do you, have you had a chance to investigate funding streams? I have not yet. I know there's no, like, FEMA grant. One thing we might consider is, and I know that we don't want to keep pushing this off, but one thing we might want to consider is a full RFP, full mm -hmm. um, design specs, engineering drawings, um, funding applications, grant writing, kind of throw everything into the throw everything into the pot a little bit, see if we can't get we're not going to get a half a dozen quotes, but see if we can get three or four. Because that will really answer all of the questions at once. I mean, we have to do it. It's a question of how we put it piecemeal and try to do it that way. Uh, but yeah, if you could get that info from him and then. Any other questions? No, but I, I certainly, look, I don't know how, how business is done. Like, he may be doing what he always does. I'm just a little surprised how very bones it was. Yeah. I think it's very bones because we we're kind of like got back in the work and was like, I kind of need this for this time to kind of do something together. Because yeah. I, I, I mentioned a couple of meetings, I was going to bring something to the board and that's kind of what I mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. um, so for the month of February, it was a very slow side, or side on the fire side. Um, there was four calls in the village, two to the listed, one to Covert, one to Hector, and one mutual aid. For a total of nine, there was 20 EMS calls to the village, 26 to Ulysses, 18 to Cohort, one to Hector, four to Interlake, and five to Mecklenburg, three mutual aid for a total of 77. Total training yard 221, fire and rescue 31.03, EMS 171.58, total hours 423.61, total calls 86, and we're pushing 1200 as I last I knew. Um, I will say one thing about this mutual aid call. It's been my worst nightmare since I've been chief, and it's having a fire on the lake. I saw a first-hand Lodi back in the end of February, and the perfect reason why we're doing what we're doing with this new mini pump and the bigger pump. It was a long, long road down to the lake. Once they got their trucks down in there, they were stuck. Um, they had to lay hose down roughly 600 feet to where they thought it was good enough to be able to bring trucks to pump water. Once the tankers pumped the water off down the road to the other trucks, they had to back almost a quarter of a mile back out. So I, what I will say is that with the town and the code enforcement and the code enforcement um, also whoever it is coming now to the fire department and getting our opinion on lake roads and where people are building and giving ideas, it is helping tremendously. Um, we're having turnarounds and that type of stuff. It's just, they did a great job, but that's why we're doing what we're doing with this new truck, have a bigger pump in case that happens to us. But it was to actually see it now firsthand, it was it was interesting. And had they, so it was Lodi prior to It was Lodi, yes. Had they done that before? It was their first try as well? I don't know. I'm there, but I mean, that's my first one in a long time that I've been to that actually was a fire day. So, mm -hmm. that's all I have. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, Jason, when you were saying that um, building, building inspectors, mm -hmm. 
the yeah. code enforcement. Code enforcement from which towns? Have you, yours. I said town. The town. Town of U.S. Well, I just said town of U.S. Okay, wasn't well, you which town? Yeah. When when someone's starting to build on the lake now, they come to us and ask for turnarounds where we want them or whatever because they're just not letting people build down there without having access. They know what the importance now. So you no, know, we talked about trying to improve yeah. it. We had a couple of situations, and so yeah. oh good, I'm glad that's working. Is that working? Is Covert doing the same thing? Yes, yeah, so, um, I did mention it to the fire chief over there. I said you need to get the town. You know, you they do it by Seneca County most of it. So he said yes, they're getting better at it now. They're working with them to have that. Just like a spot for a truck to turn around, so they can drive out because it's quicker to drive out than it is back out. And it's just I'm glad that the people that are driving trucks were experienced because it it wasn't a straight back up. It was around corners and it was it was tough. Any other questions or comments for Jason? All right, thank you. Um, that will move us to reports from commissioners. So, Rachel, any more on fire? No. Uh, ben, any less than you? Um, so, Nancy, Gordon, and I were at a meeting was that um, with a couple members from the school board. Most of the town board, or all of the town board was there. Yeah, all of them were there. Oh, yeah. Um, and a few representatives from from the Berkeley Um We didn't really go into any details. It was more just sort of meeting who the who the stakeholders from the various groups are. It was definitely it was a, I felt like it was a good productive meeting, even if there wasn't any. You know, there was a few steps I heard. For instance, the school has property enough to build more fields behind them, which I didn't realize. Um, so that's the big, I guess we'll see how it goes. Hopefully if there's a couple people, so, you know, offered Liz offered to help write grants, sort of grudgingly, um, there's a number of next steps, so we'll see, see how that progresses. Um, well, first, the school would want you to clarify that while they may have land, they would not be financially oh, right, underwriting right. the cost of no, developing right. fields or attaching uh, a building that could house a swimming pool or anything, right. but they might, right. in effect, donate the land and maintain, maintain whatever gets built if somebody could, you know, if, if you can fund it, they... Right. And they did, I mean, they did say that it was possible that they might help with the maintenance if something was built in that, which was, I thought, more of an offer from the school, or not an offer, but it was more willingness from the school than yeah. they also yeah. talked about. Yeah. They also talked about being willing to be the funding arm if there are grant applications out there that require things like um, Tara mentioned. Adidas has large amounts of grant money, but it's only for existing programs. So we look at schools as a sports program. That might be something they could they could tap into. You know, I I thought it was really productive only because. It wasn't all that long ago when the school wasn't interested, a uh, different school board, different superintendent, but they weren't uh, interested necessarily in participating in these types of community build type projects that use school land. Uh, at least the one school board member and the superintendent last week seemed to be really eager to do, do something like this. I thought that was like actually eager. You know, what can we do? What can we do next to help? Yeah, that was definitely an impression. Um, I also, and Rachel, I don't know if you want to give an update on the meeting earlier today, but we went to the um, meeting regarding the, the LED switch. Um, and that definitely sounded like something we should pursue. Um, one thing. Not only really LED switching, but just the bot. Right, the buy 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 buying them back, I guess, is the, is the, the bigger first, piece of it. I guess, yeah, or the it's first, the same thing. Like, in terms of. Yeah, I think there's the energy consumption piece, but then there's the incredible savings that seems like cities are, and, and other municipalities are realizing just by buying their lights back right. from this. And I was talking to the city electrician, I guess it is, who said that one of their lights that they had switched over earlier as part of a sort of small pilot program that the city did went from costing about $70 a month to costing $6 a month, which is. Wow. Just. I don't know if that's representative, I mean, but 
Yeah, so Dustin's hot. I don't know exactly what that is, but we've started switching over the lights down Main Street and this black street lamps right. to LED bulbs. I think we only have three changed at the moment. Yeah. Excuse me, as the ballasts are going, we're replacing them with LED functioning bulbs basically that have the built in ballast. And that's what you are doing. I believe yes. so. And yes. so three of them have been switched. It's just been a matter of when they go, we're switching them now. Um, I don't know if there's anything more to that um, this meeting. Um, but we have started doing something along those lines yeah, that's when it comes to switching our lights over. Yeah, and this is so this is a bigger project, I think. I mean, the city initially had offered to be to do the installation and to do the whole thing. I think they backed up that it would probably be a contractor of some kind, but it still seems like something that's very much worth pursuing um, to my end. And Liz and Terry, who were uh, well, they had suggested the uh, check. I don't know if it's Cameron or Marty who had sent in. The request for I said for their finding across they responded. They responded by saying basically you're on the list. Um, but I don't know that we've heard, but I can I can email them. Uh, so, so Liz suggested that we check for a, a follow-up email that was asking for a non-disclosure agreement that she apparently had missed for some time and just got it blended in on was a weird email for some reason. Okay. So you might so want to check non disclosure. Yeah. It's been like four or five months. Right. Oh, yeah. Just, I just don't know that that easily. And we, I mean, we only have the one account, right? With that? I don't have to know. We have a lot for the street lights, you know. We have, uh, there's probably six or seven. I'm just delighted with the sewer plant, which I realized when you sent me those nice things. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, and there's several accounts at DPW, you know, the park. We rent the light? We rent the yeah. yeah. light at the sewer plant. Yeah. In the park, the D from W. The same people we rent on the rest of the Yeah. Yeah. Tammy, if you have trouble finding that email, I know that the town did pass a, a resolution related to that non disclosure, which seems really unnecessary to actually just talk to them about what these costs might be, but uh, Carissa would probably be able to locate a resolution or some of the background. There, it's definitely a bizarre agreement because it's obviously foilable information, but apparently NYSEG doesn't want municipalities to talk to each other during the negotiating process. So, well, <laughs> it's a very strange. Makes perfect sense. Right? Yeah, it's, it's okay. yes, uh, Ben Darth for 32 weeks. Ago. So, the buyback program is buying back the lights that we're renting? Is that? Mm -hmm. or, okay, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and you can convert them to LED, that's, I mean, that's... Got it, right, right, right. Okay. Old, old right. So it's a, it's a significant cost savings long term, but it's also, you know, energy efficiency is one of the... Right, I just didn't understand who was buying what back from whom. Right, <laughs> the village buying back lights that we lose. Got is, it. There, is there the potential to do a bulk buyback with the listings? And, or maybe I guess you don't have to do We have to negotiate. I think we have seven. Right, but there's maybe like the city that cares more. Like, yeah. I think so. Nice is intentionally taking that the on the table. Factor. The man that was speaking to <coughs> did talk about how that's working so in favor of some folks. Maybe, maybe those days are gone. Though, like. and, well, so one thing is that we can include Terry, who's been sort of the contact person. Um, we can include him in our non disclosure agreement so he can see all of them. But he was describing his instructions from NYSEG, and it was bizarre. They didn't, they wanted him to, like, I don't know, partition his brain or something, so that they didn't, I mean, you know, we'll negotiate as hard as we can, regardless of this, but it's very strange. And anyway, um, as far as EMS goes, I did look at the rates. Ryan is unfortunately still back, so I haven't been able to do it in depth. Okay. Oh, look I want to go back to the lights for one second. If you don't mind. Sure. Um, I was just fascinated to hear some of the. Um, I mean, I know that it's not super significant because we, we're not a large city, we don't have like thousands of lights, but just the, the ability to. Um, I don't know if this exists 
now or in the future, or if we even have the capacity to do it. But to be able to dim your lights after 11 p.m. by 50 percent to save you know more energy, and I just think it's you know, there's a lot of opportunities for you can do that remotely, so you can set it up so you can access your lights remotely. You can have a dimmer switch for the whole village. Right. Which is bizarre, or you can have it automatic. Um, or you can have it based on motion, so that if you know if no one walks by for three hours or for two hours, then they turn. I would right. access to that. Line. <laughs> 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 he definitely doesn't get access to that. Doesn't size or go. I just think you know, know that the freezes maybe and the light go off. That's not good. You know, it's hacked when somebody does strange things. You can sing up to music in the holidays. Yeah. Thank you. So okay, anything else? Yeah. yeah. I did talk to we did talk about I did you hear yeah. from him? He did not commit to it. He was not I, mean, I did talk to him this morning oh, just okay. briefly. Oh, please be careful. Okay. Yeah. But I he's coming back in later in the week, so I'll talk to him But I did look at our rates, I think, and I did get to touch with Lumet, so I have some of the broader information as far as our building goes, I think that our rates currently should get us to our target. So I don't think that we have to change them uh, in order to get to 60 bucks. In order to get to 60 bucks, which is somewhere. So that doesn't preclude a conversation about changing them, and it becomes just a different kind of Just for budget purposes. Right. Okay. Well, that's actually helpful, because what I forgot to mention is that the town tomorrow night we will be looking at our EMS rates, and I did get more rates for more services directly from the Med MedEx than the few figures that Brian gave that were comparisons. And uh, we are looking to sort of possibly stabilize with the village, but if, we, <laughs> if, if you're planning to. We'll be a step ahead, then I'll that. Yeah. Okay. So are you postponing that discussion about rates increases? Well, we, can, we don't need to have this part of the budget discussion, oh. so yeah, we'll, we'll have that. I mean, it's, it's certainly not something I'd like to do unless we're pressed without talking to Brian in any case. I was going to, I was trying to push it so we'd have it for the budget, <coughs> but I don't think I we need to. No, so I'll yeah. Okay. We'll wait until Brian ends up this Okay. Part. So that's, that's all. Debbie, do you have any water in the store? Um, I don't have anything in the budgets, really, okay. uh, at this time. Uh, um, we're ready to close out the water and sewer project. Uh, that will be March 21st, I believe. Um, the startup of the Bell Press will be March 26th, due to David being on uh, vacation. It sounds like all the problems related to it are being remedied. Yes, the, all the um, issues were pulled out and replaced with them. And I am meeting with Fred and Mary the 23rd about the payment, the lease payment, mm -hmm. and then what happens year after year after that. Mm -hmm. right. So we're all on the same page about it's always $43,000. Yes, but then they pay us back in for maintenance. Yes, yep, but yes. Yes, but Fred wanted to meet with about all that, so that's all set up too. Okay. Awesome. So that's it. That's it? Okay. So, Gordon, uh, police and uh, health and social? So, police, there was an MOU with Skyler County that we tabled a couple months ago because I wasn't sure which MOU this was. We have a training MOU with Skyler County. This is an older MOU that we've had for our officers entering Skyler County immediately becoming essentially deputized Skyline County Sheriff's deputies for any incident in which they're there. It also covers them if Skyler County asks for assistance for large events like the race. Um, so there isn't any reason not to re-sign it. We've had this in place for years and years with Skyler. So I would like to, unless, even if there are questions we can talk about it, I would like to move that we authorize Marty to sign this MOU with County uh, Sheriff's Department effectively. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. Yeah. 
All right, any discussion? Any problem? Those in favor say aye. 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 Passes. Second police item is um, Officer Brian Jolly. Um, is currently still on employee based probation as a, as a relative in the higher with us. Due to some, uh, he's been an exemplary officer, and due to some timing to do with his age, we would like to end his probationary period earlier than normal so that he doesn't lose some civil service uh, rights, so to speak, that might phase out if his probationary period ends after his next birthday, which is coming up. So it is as a courtesy to him. He's been a great officer. We would like him to retain all of his civil service police potential future employment, advancement, um, promotion capability that he would have if he comes on probation this month. So with that said, I would like to make a motion that we remove Brian Jolly from his probationary period with the Village of Transfer Police Department. Second. So how short is he from making probation? Two, three months? Yeah, it's so, yeah, yeah. How long is our probation? Yeah. So it's pretty close. Um, any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those abstaining passes. The only other thing I have is Chief's report since he's not here. If I can pull it up. Yeah, 
willing maybe to uh, make a motion uh, for this agreement uh, for doing the uh, fiscal impact analysis on the 46 South Street project from Kamoin Associates. Yeah, I move the second. Okay. Um, any discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 What's the time frame that they, they talk about there? Um, six, six, eight, eight, eight. Okay, good. Um, so the, uh, we received correspondence related to the Tamina Garden Club uh, work on um, signage um, at the uh, water tower. So Janice, if you'd like to Okay. okay. Do you want me to stand up? If you like. Well, it's it's whatever you. Do you want to sit there? Fine. Yeah. No, I'm too short. Stand up. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's it. Right. Yeah. for you, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, in um, 1964, the um, new Group 96 went in, and that made the um, hill that's between Old Main. In 96, and so there were a group of people who wanted to um, put trees in there and grass and make it a little more, you know, presentable. They uh, planted 10 spruce trees, flowering crabs, cherry trees, and shrubs, and this was all done by Rotary Club, the Boy Scouts, Chamber of Commerce, and the Village of Fishers. And to, uh, that also include plant boxes with a flower and crab and petunias, and each one located in the business section of Main Street. In 1966, Louise DeLong, who has long passed away, her name was Lounsbury, before that, and you can't remember her. Um, she decided that she wanted to start the Garden Club officially, and so she invited people and they elected officers. And so the first thing they did was to work on the hillside project to um, trim the trees, and also they had an area in front of the mobile gas station, which is now Rondon's, for those of you who haven't lived here long. There was a gas station there during that time. And they also provided the library with dry floral arrangements throughout the year, uh, through the year. So now fast forward to here, we have 32 members, 28 of them women, and their probably average age is 75. Um, <clears throat> we do have four men, also average age is 75. <laughs> And part of the, pro uh, the reason that that happens is because we have a program every month and it's held during the day. So if you are working, you can go. <laughs> so a uh, lot of times people join when they retire. So um, actually we have one on March 15th that is uh, called Good Growing the Aero Farms presented by, it's an aeroponic system and it will be held at the library at 1230, it's open to the public. Um, so, aeroponics? Aeroponics. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know a little more about that? Growing vegetables indoors in a sustainable way without pesticides, mm -hmm. etc. One of the programs that we had in, um, last year was the CSI program, and the Garden Club helps to support that. So we have only one fundraiser a year, and I'm sure you've seen it on Main Street, held at the Presbyterian Church. We dig from our gardens and um, also, you know, have some annuals that we purchase from Eddieville, actually. Um, so that's our only fundraiser, and then basically we spend the rest uh, of the year giving the money away to various um, endeavors, um, including um, buying books in on garden for the library. Um, we support the Children's Garden in Ithaca, the food bank. Um, what else? The Christmas Bureau, CSI, etc. It also depends on what's brought to us as to uh, to be considered. We'd like to try to have it related to gardening, and whether it's flower gardening or vegetable gardening, or topics that might relate to conservation. Um, so, for your information that you may not know, we take care of. Um, gardens at each of the three entrance signs to the village. One is at the top, uh, water tower. One is um, kind of next to the hair cutters you come into town on 96. 
One is at the SureSave post office, the bus stop in Jacksonville, and uh, there is uh, a smallish garden at Juniper Manor that we assist the, the members with. So, um, I got started coming to these meetings because the sign at the SureSave fell on our garden, and if we, after a very long investigation, no one knows who owns those signs, who put them up, and who or maintains them. So, uh, the village, DW, fortunately, put the sign back up on the SureSave, even though that's on property, private property, just like the one in the barn. So, the only garden that is on um, village property is the water tower. Line. And uh, previously, we had hired KJ uh, Landscaping to redo the gar uh, to do the garden that's on um, the north end, and we want to do something similar on the south end. Long time ago, they planted some viburnums around the sign, and they were totally a mess. And we tried to trim them, and then, again, being on village property, I thought I should ask, and everybody said, "Just do whatever you want with them." So um, I did contact Dave Allen three times, and he said that he would take them down, but he never did. And then I'm not reporting who took them down and hauled it away, but it was a garden club member. <laughs> so now we have these stumps there, and the entire garden itself is misshapen because of the shade that is produced by those trees. So what we would like to do is um, have the stumps ground out. Um, we want to put steel landscaping edging in. I, I don't know how that would affect when you mold there. If you have industrial yeah. waste stream turn around everything. Okay, so that's so that 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 that. that. And then they would clean up. Well, first thing they have to do is I, and I'm going to be the one to do it, um, lift out everything that's there so that we can save that and replant it um, after it has been done. So it would be according to the you know, the description here, clean up the bed, install a layer of compost uh, for the soil and then new edging, um, reshape the bed for a more uniform and symmetrical uh, shape and size, and um, then we'll, we'll replant the mulch just like we always do and we take care of that and water it because if we have a dry season, we have to haul the water to these places. And um, that particular garden, being in the full sun takes a lot of water. It's amazing how much water we individuals. We are on a cycle. Not one person is in charge of that, but various people are. So that was going to be a total of um, $634.99. And I'm not asking the village to pay for this. We have the money. And that's one of our ways of spending the money we, um, we earn from our plant sale. But I just wanted to. So I asked, yeah, I just asked Jim, since it's on village property. That, that yes. We do with any of our other projects yes. to come in for forests and the blessing that went on the board. It was 1987 when the sign went in at the water tower, I think. Okay. Because um, I remember when it wasn't there. Uh -huh. I guess I didn't ask you. Dan Virgin, I think Dan Virgin had hand painted it, but I don't know who carved Well, it's carved. It's carved. And, and, he, and I remember him painting the lettering. But who he was, who paid for that? Who Nobody seems that? to know. Tammy, you know, volunteered to go up into the historian's boxes and I said, hey. I want out. <laughs> I mean, he's been more reliable than the historian. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think it's a donate. It was long ago. Well, down at the bottom, you know, they had all those circles for all yeah. the churches. Yeah. So then some people said churches, and then they said, oh no, it could have been the churches that paid for it because it's you know, government thing. Well, and then it was the church. Chamber of Commerce, and then it was the Rotary Club. And I followed all those leads, and everybody said, I don't know. Everybody else. Right? Every, yeah, yeah. Good point. The only thing I was told that was sort of interesting, I went to talk to Liz Thomas about it, and she said, um, or somebody in the office said, oh, Dave Reynolds takes care of it. And he's the one who takes care of it, and he's part of the Garden Club. And I said, well, that I can definitely tell you is not true. <laughs> so, it's a great mystery. I mean, they yes, it is. Not given enough. I really don't care anymore. <laughs> you know, but I was contacted. Probably the next thing on the list was by Don Slatter, who said he wants to attach something to those signs for the farmers market. I said, not my time. <laughs> Basically.
And that's actually, I talked to Elaine Springer about that, and she doesn't know where Don got that idea because that's not the way they're going. Okay. So they're going a different way. All right. Because it really, really wouldn't work to sign up or where they would attach it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. they, they sort of thought out, and mm -hmm. you know, and a year ago they were talking about Vicki Romanoff had a plan to replace all of those signs to the tune of $10,000, but no money for that. So they're going to stay with what we've got. Why do I think Tom Lang was involved? Well, I asked Carolyn, and she, she couldn't really remember. Yeah. She's also a member of the Garden Club. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we can just proceed. Get yeah, on this list as soon as possible because things are coming up. You know what? Any of that part of that bill to go to the beautification grant? Yeah. Um, maybe if we plant new um, plantings, isn't okay. that the criteria? Um, no. Oh, but it's whatever beautifies the village. Chris well, is right. really good about that. I mean, okay. So I could submit that, and we could possibly. But I want to ask the village for anything. No, I think okay. you know this is its own in and out. As long as you guys are doing the volunteer work that takes, and if the DPW does any part, it's all volunteer. We just have to match it 50, 50, 50. So we don't think we need the DPW to do anything. Okay. Um, Who's bringing you know, that? You're gonna drive Pardon me? No, KJ. Uh, oh. KJ Landscapes. They, they, they did the one in the North Garden. It came out very nicely, and so we want to just you know stick with them. And I met with him. Him wearing shorts and I had on, you know, had gloves and a coat. And the snowstorm. Um, <laughs> um, so we would like him to do it, and but we want to get on his list soon before um, the season passes and we're lifting out uh, fully developed plants and shocking them. How we put that in? So that's the garden story. <laughs> The farmer, I know the farmer's market is, Elaine is writing a grant to the tourism that I think is due on the 19th um, to do these signs that they're talking about. And then they talked about but doing the next in a different year. That's for the farmer's market? That's for the farmer's market that they wanted to do. But they're yeah. planning on doing some plantings on the hill at the farmer's market. That we can also do through our beautification grant. I can talk to Chris. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, any other new business then? Yeah. Okay. Old business. Uh, we have two items. The first is the last board meeting we had. We uh, had a discussion on uh, the possibility of a moratorium. At the end of that discussion, the village board. Uh, thought it was wise to talk to the attorney for the village about moratorium answering our questions. We had a private session with Guy Crow, the attorney for the village. Um, and so we're back to the, uh, the point now after getting kind of information uh, on Steve. And he gave us a, a very good tutorial of, of the reasons for moratorium. Um, I would say the official criteria, the criteria that we should use it. And a big one was that, do we have the uh, mechanisms in place to review a project like uh, any size project, small or whatever? And so with uh, subdivision and site plan review, we do have those uh, in place that, uh, that can review projects uh, that, that may be out there. Um, so I just leave it open to village board members that want to comment. Uh, and if someone has an inkling to, to make any move on the funds. Well, that was unfortunately out of town for you. Yeah, you missed, you missed I, we heard you were having fun. For the tutorial. <laughs> um, but but I, I remain where I was some weeks ago. I'm not convinced that the moratorium is the right tool. Uh, I do believe that it was specifically targeting an attempt at stop of a particular project. Inappropriate uses of the moratorium. I do think that there are deficiencies in the zoning that need to be addressed, but I don't believe that the moratorium is needed to address those. Um, so, besides the fact that I missed that, missed that uh, class, um, <laughs> three hours. Yeah, it was it, it was an effective use of our time, yes. and it confirmed to me also that the moratorium is not the way to go. 
Uh, but I didn't come up with any. Um, it, 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 if anything, it confirmed that mm -hmm. the meeting of the attorney. Um, the only question I had is do we take the vote now or do we take it after the election? That's the only question I have. I think the better question is is anyone willing to move it? Yes. Um, so for, for me, I was actually looking for reasons to support it, and I got, I didn't get any of them. Even the limited version that Marty has initially supported, I don't, I don't think, at best, we're on shaky ground legally. At best, in a best case scenario, I don't think we get any productive results out of the moratorium, even if we were, to, you know, that we couldn't get otherwise. So I. And you know, what, one of the reasons that I you know, suggested is uh, it pushes the envelope to get some action done. So all I would suggest that we're not going to move forward, that hopefully the next board will pick that up and make it a high priority to, well, to do that. I'm more than willing to move that we not that that we not okay. take any action on the moratorium at this point in time. Okay. We have a motion. I will only suggest that I don't know that we want a motion and not have some that. Well, I think that it, it's a clear direction. I think that people are waiting for an answer. And that's my answer. So, so your answer was not moving forward to the moratorium. Not moving, yes. Well, it could be a motion to table the discussion on okay. the Maybe that's the best that's, way. Maybe that's the event that I'll take. So we are going to table the discussion on the moratorium. So is there a second for that motion? I'll second it. Until when? Right. Just this later date. Doesn't say when. Because there's only two guarantees that are going to be here. And right. Right. So that's that. that. Yeah. Well, right. It's a later date. I, I will go so far to say after the election. Okay. I found it interesting. Um, one of the things that I was trying to turn it over my mind is the notion that a moratorium, the tool of a moratorium serves to, uh, the purpose of the tool is to prohibit something for a specific purpose. And I I think from that perspective, I just I can't, I can't figure out what it is we would be attempting to prohibit. Uh, can't do you. Sorry, sorry. I think this, the, I, I sometimes, can't speak loudly when I'm thinking in the talk. Um, the, the purpose of the moratorium is to prohibit something. And I'm not comfortable with that notion that we are in that position as a village right now. That's all I want to say, thanks. So we have a motion and a friendly amendment to not consider this. Okay, we'll have to do that. Okay. Okay. So just wait down on the count. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, not all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Aye. Passes. Let's do it. The future date. So the second whole business is 911 response agreement.
Is it in the February? Well, well it's actually there right now. Yes, you don't leave until you have some cake. You've got to have cake.
nothing. I, I want to make sure I use a different version because Rachel saved hers to the Dropbox list. And, and oh, sorry. No, 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 that's fine. So, uh, that's why I used my original one. I'm going to make sure I'm using that one before we get too far in.
would like, well, what do you need? You need five days to notice the public hearing? Business or calendar? Business. But you know what? The budget is a five. I need to I need to double check. I can do that while you're doing that here. Because my thought is that I'd like to oh, wait until the last minute, wait until the last day to notice it. The budget, the budget public hearings to give assessment time to see if the numbers change at all. Which it might not until May anyway, but I'm starting to see on the assessment website on properties, I'm starting to see the red preliminary assessment designation right. show up. So I don't know if, when they're finally going to come up. How significant was the change last year? Was Four million. A lot. Hmm? Four million. So, so what was the difference in? About 21 cents. We thought it would be 7 11, it was 6 80. Yeah. We shoot for 7 11 again and see if we can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all that does, you can do that. <laughs> right. Um, not for nothing, but the only problem with that is that you know eventually we're going to have to go over that 7 11. If you go from 7 11 to 7 37, people scream. If you go from 7 22 to 7 37, they don't scream as loud. That's true. I mean, I wouldn't suggest to accept that our, Just our fund balance at this point, I think we're being fairly conservative in what we do, even to go to a 3%. I mean, we're still exceeding the conflict recommendations by. That's the end. Was do we wait for a year when we've got. When we're really screwed. When we've got a second <laughs> ambulance, a second full time crew, and fire department renovation that happened all in the same year? Maybe do we. Right. I mean, but, it's time. but we're starting to get into that area where it's, you know, a sort of consortium area where it's like, <laughs> it's not quite as good as a consortium. All right, that's an exaggeration. But, you know, 400,000? Yeah. Right. Well, what do people want to put in? That's the. I mean, we also have, you know, can we imagine that the planning and zoning numbers will stay that high for? Forever. For a couple of years. For a couple of years, but I mean, probably this maybe 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 for still, I guess. Well, even if they, I mean, if they, I mean, if they actually build and we get any tax revenue out of it, we should see our tax rates go down. But I mean, like over cycles are so long. Yeah. And we're looking at a decade build cycle. That's yeah. Cool. yeah. For some reason, I think it's 10. Yeah, I think the 
But Debbie's point is well taken. I mean, non tax part of the increase in costs are pretty, pretty tangible. So maybe trying to offset it for this. I mean, that, we'll pay what we have to pay anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that. Oh, 
I try to just keep track of that stuff for future reference. Can I just let me just see if this fails? Oh, I know why. Okay, I'm good. Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Water. So uh, I just want to walk through this. Okay. Morning, I took your advice. The heart. On the race. On the race. I guess it's better than being hard. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> oh, and you get to make me crazy in the middle. Absolutely. Yes. So, so, um, so what we figured out <coughs> is that we are going to, first of all, this quarter is going to go up $2 in base mm -hmm. for inside and $2 per gallon and it's not per thousand gallons. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Per thousand gallons for this quarter only. I'm talking about the quarter starting in May. I'm talking the about the billing happening now. For when does that billing happen? Goes through May first. May first is the we're in we're in the February, March, April quarter which is already being calculated on our current rate. So if we want to change... No, we already noticed, and we didn't need to notice these changes. They were supposed to happen and were voted on two quarters. <coughs> okay. That's right, and we had that software issue, which, by the way, for those of you who haven't heard, um, what happened is we had an update done, and when we did the update, they didn't remove our old instance of the software. So I was pointed at one, and Tony and Vicky were pointed at the other, which which is what screwed up our dates, it screwed up our rates, it changed all the information. So that's what had happened. So that's all been put back in proper order. So current quarter. Yeah, so February will go up by two bucks. So what's the base going to be? 51.35. Yep. And six. So, but it's only that quarter and this is the the good thing about that is this is the lightest quarter for water for all users okay so the may quarter is going to go what the may quarter will go to the will go to, will go to um, the may quarter will go to 55 and 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 drop the per gallon rate to five seventy five. Okay. August quarter, it'll go up to fifty eight fifty, and the base uh, the gallon rate will go to six dollars. Okay. June, July, August. That's not going to be August. That's going to be, um, this is the one thing. I wanted to do the May quarter rates for two quarters. Okay. Okay, then the following quarter, so the third quarter of this fiscal year. August. It's not, I mean, it's not August. August. It's going to be November. November. Okay. November will be 58, 50, and, five, and 6. Wait, no. That's what you just said for August, do <clears throat> yeah, that's not for August. It's going to be the same as it was in May. <coughs> oh, okay. So we're going to have two of the lowest months okay. for the year because we have we have four quarters, right? So the one we're in, you're taking a five fifty one thirty five and seven and a quarter. Yes, 35. that's for this fiscal year. That's not for the, anything for next year. Yep. Okay. So the fifty, the fifty five, and the five seventy five. It's going to run for six months. Mm -hmm. So it will run from May through November. Is that six months? Five, 55 and six. And at 55 and 575 run from May through November. For usage through May, not billing through May, right? Mm -hmm. We should only be talking usage. Yes, we're only talking usage. It gets billed whenever it gets billed. So current quarter usage. February, March, April quarter that we're currently in, the usage is going to be 51.35 and 7.25. Yeah, I agree. And May, you 
usage quarter strikes is 55 and 575. Mm -hmm. Yes, no. So no. just, maybe she just told me. Yeah, no, that is what it is. I said 55 and 575. Yeah. So May through October. So the May through July. You're good. Usage. And the August, September, October stay that way. Is that what right. you're saying? And then November, starting in November quarter, you want to go up to what? 58, 56, and then 58, 50, and then six dollars. Okay. And then you're looking at another bump next February quarter. Wait a minute, yes. February quarter would be 62, 50, and 625. And that's the year. Now, based on that, what I did was I added all of these together to figure out how much money that gives me. Yes, I do. Okay. So so that that totals net revenues for two this fiscal period of six hundred and sixty eight thousand five hundred and seventy dollars. Is that what's up? Eight cents? Six six eight five three cents. Give or take. Yeah. So I haven't had a chance to talk to you about this. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about outside rates. Completely muddy this up. Can, can we can we at least confirm this approach? Then we can go back and talk about whether we take it out of outside rates. No, I'm actually not even talking about outside rates yet. Um, I'm just wondering if there's a way to smooth this a little bit to get water rates are. Nobody's going to notice it because I, 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 I mean, everybody's going to notice it because it came up, but nobody's okay. not going to notice the bumps in the, those things because of the way the water usage goes. I mean, by the time we get to November, they're they're using less water, so you're gonna you're you're going up, but you're not. It's not. So your net bill is less. Yeah, it doesn't change that much. The, I just want to say to her, whether or not it works out, it was a brilliant calculation. There you go. <laughs> so yes and no, because the bills that go out in November, so the usage for May, June, part of July, part of August. Historically, the number of billing is our highest. They're absolutely going to notice. Trust me when I tell you. When you said November billing, those are the bills that go out in November. For the usage for the August, of May, September. June, July. For the August, September, October quarter. Yeah, bills that go out in November are August, September, October. Yeah. They're part of July, all of August, all of September, and part of October. It's our highest billing, always. Lawns, pools, showers. Yeah, that's the lowest kids home. Yeah, yeah. 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 November. That's fine. But okay. Hey. Put it out as you expect. So you want to muddy the water by changing, finding a, a median rate and, and leaving it there, which I had at one point and decided that that was too much. Long term, yes. So what I've been monkeying around with is it's a median rate that's going to generate a surplus. <coughs> well, this generates a surplus, but not much. It's a median rate that, instead of coming out with a whole new way to calculate outside rates, we find the median rate stick with the rate and a half calculation for outside. But then as we run an encumbered balance in the water fund, use a portion of that against the budget and only reduce inside rates 
go in the make order, can we go to 55 and 6? And, and what do you bring? Just make it more? Why not? Just 55, 55 and 6. Okay, what do you want to know about that number? Okay. Just why? So now. Oh. <laughs> 55 and 6. I'm now at 676. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't even worry about what that does to your revenue. Your revenue alone for this budget is going to do whatever it needs to be to balance the right. expense line. Right. Could we build at 55 and 6 and then leave that for six months? And then in the November quarter, start 58.75 and 6, bump the base slightly. And it's an even step from 55 to 62.50 to $7.50. So we're going to 58.75 in the November quarter base. And then 62.50 next February, and then we'll leave that as our calculation. Are you leaving the baby uh, as far as gallons in the after six months? After six months, I'm leaving it at six. Okay. It, what, that, and where for the base go to, Gordon? 5875. 5875, okay. And then we go to, and we're going to leave the 6250. 6250 and six and a quarter. Yeah. And leave that as our final calculation okay. from which to get outside forever. Unless we have the base. That's a change. Oh, yeah. And then from there, wow. if we have everyone yeah. who's outside now is going to keep getting, is going to keep paying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then now we can start to talk about quantity breaks, municipal rates for other new users that have that aren't connected yet. Okay. And all of that revenue comes back to take down the inside rate. Got it. That's a really, that's a really hefty number. I mean, that, yeah, my budget is great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have some money in my uh, <laughs> fund. So the two thoughts is it does a rate stabilization. <laughs> even if we, even if we have to. So remember how we looked at a long time ago how we were yeah. the outside rate wasn't covering our home costs. Right. That goes away with this next February rate. That's what our pumping cost is? It's a little bit higher than our pumping cost. We're actually making a little money on outside rates when we charge the right inside. Right. Okay. That any new users outside, any municipal users, even if we have to go below pumping costs for a large user per gallon, if the revenue is big enough and it's coming back inside, mm -hmm. then as we run surpluses, we need to put money aside for the stuff that wasn't put aside over the last 40 years. Yeah, I've been doing, yeah, and, absolutely. And control in separate. Got it. Yeah. That's handy. Okay. So you got your number, Vicki. 672. I got it. 699. And the budget is? Tammy, every water period, we need to go over this before the lake is closed. Over what? <laughs> you know, I know I think oh. That's all I got. I got a number for sewer. And the bucket looks down sewer. We have a number for sewer. Yeah, it was a buck and a buck and a half, right? No, but we have we have the revenue number. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I'm going to come to the April meeting with a draft of the new sewer law. Local law proposed to of 2018 for sewer rate. Yep. Yeah. 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 We have to do a sewer rates increase by public yeah. by local law. So I will have a draft for you in April, and then hopefully you can you can schedule that for May. And if that's you, to that to you know that's another one we need. I'd love to know how we're going to expand sewer. I mean we know. We're talking to Frank Palmer, who's going to be doing disposal in our sewage plant. So that'll be extra revenue without anything. But we do have to. Um, Guy had actually had that, or, or David. One of them was supposed to be buying some kind of a 
contractual because we've never done yeah, that. Yeah, we haven't done that. Yeah. And, and one, of the, that one of the pieces of that was that to make sure that they, they're not dumping anything from fracking in our sewer plants. I, and they have to be completely residential. I mean, there's got to be some, something in the contract that makes that. There's got to be a way to test it, and there's a different reader that goes along with it um, that I'm aware of. The NRB is me Could that have gone to David and then David retired? Could that be just sort of? I mean, I might have. That's what I have. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. So we need to we need to revive that because Frank's going to come back and want Frank Palmer is doing this. Yeah. He's going to want. Well, that I mean, there are sections of the village where that's sewage. I mean, that's the other. I think place. well, if anybody ever develops mill spots, I think we should require that they go on so I mean, period. Well, especially well, when it sits in the you know the stream overlay, it sh definitely should and it should trigger that. Because uh, as far as I know, that's the only one on that side that doesn't, doesn't have sewer. Mine doesn't have sewer. You don't have sewer. Who's thoughts on this? Uh, it's 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 I know. It's 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 I didn't think it was on our street. Oh, I mean, I knew this part. Pretty so much, all the ones I know. Congress the King, all of King to the U Street, that whole section is without. So the prospect is, except for Barbara Page, I think, the new house, all the new stuff's on the pumping station yes. there. Wait, is that again? Mm -hmm. That whole section is on the house? Yes. So I want that to Basically, Congress, there may be one or two houses coming down on East Seneca from Congress that's in, but the line then goes across. It's all it's whatever the gravity, if you look at the elevation where the gravity feed went. Yeah, it's totally they have they, they have approaches about putting in a lift pump up yeah. to up to Seneca's road. But uh, uh, you know yeah, they have to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have to you know you look at it's kind of like a water district. You have to look at who are the how many potential users and what it's going to cost, and then you got to divvy that up. Okay, so I think we're done with. Um, you know what, there's hard copies right there in front. 
Friday here. I opened this at the end of the day. It's also still a little bit. Did you say there are archives? I think so. I don't think we have to. Did I have to do it? Maybe not. I don't think I may have lied to you completely unintentionally. I don't think I did. Look at all the dates, guys. I did a title to the home, so I don't know. It's not even what I want right here. Oh, that was here.
trusted agency for $1,552.71. This seems really small. Um, that is because I am um, having a back and forth with, between Excellus and the consortium about getting the credit for Brian Woodoo's going from single to single. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I got it. Is that a Tory? That's why I don't know what you said. Yeah, that's right. Pippa, everybody. Yeah, well, oh, I'm sorry. Very good. That's our comment. I think we paid $1,552 for some of those other stuff. I don't know if it was me or not. Any discussion? I don't know if there was a uh, public, any more public comment? Public? Or you could comment on what? Thank you. Um, Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Marty. That was my father. My public comment. I said a second. <laughs> second. Okay. Before we go, thanks for Marty. I was actually going to mention the water rates yeah. back in 2011 over what? Yeah, we I yeah, 34, 34 or something. It's less than that. 475. 475. Yeah. So for those rates of government would be at 68 and uh, I did look at that. It's uh, actually any need for an executive session. No. No, I can't believe it. <laughs> We're just gonna complain about the same old thing. So I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'm sure you like the second. This is us. Don't do it, Rich. Don't do it. Come on. Don't do it, Rich. Do it. All right. All those in favor say aye. No. I abstain. I abstain. The other two, 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 the other